Hold up. All right, so in this video, we're going to do a bald fade with Walls Clippers instead of Andy's. People have been asking me to do it, so I finally got it done. And quick plug in Headlines Barbershop, we're in the Tampa Bay area. Come check us out. Cool. So I'm using the Wall Icon Clipper today. And this clipper's okay. It's not as good as the Senior. I think the Senior is probably the top dog with Walls, but it's a decent clipper. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the number four guard. And what I'm doing is I'm removing bulk. I'm taking the number four guard all the way to the bridge of his head and um, go, doing upward strokes, not really digging into the top of his hair. But the reason why I'm doing this is to clear out a lot of the hair so that I can see what I'm doing when I'm fading. And the term for this is pretty much just removing bulk. Alright, so let's go ahead and start balding, balding out. You guys know... I always use the wall balding clipper to do this. Great clipper. You guys know how I feel about this clipper. Alright, so right here, we have no guard on the clipper. We got the blade all the way open. This is considered by many a half. But it's pretty much the blade all the way open. And we're going to go up about three quarters of an inch. Half an inch. I mean, the, the minimum is half an inch. The most is an inch. See, walls, when the blade is all the way open, cut shorter than Andy's when the blade is all the way open. That's one of the big differences between Walls and Andy's. See, with the Andy's, I would recommend every time to go up about an inch. With Walls, I would stay a little bit underneath an inch. Just because it cut, cuts a lot shorter. So let's go ahead and start blending out this line that we created with the, with the balding clipper and the half. And we're going to start off with the blade all the way closed. Go up about a quarter of an inch. Now open it up to about a quarter quarter of the way and go up another quarter of an inch. Essentially what we're doing is we're gradually opening the blade the closer that we get to that next guideline. So now the blade's three quarters of an inch, um, I mean three quarters of the way open and we went up another quarter of an inch. We're all pretty much right underneath that next guideline. And go ahead and do this all the way around. Alright, cool. So I got the number one guard on. It's all the way open. And now we're creating our next guideline. We're creating the next space so that we can go ahead and start blending. Give yourself enough space when you're going up with the one and a half or, or the one guard all the way open. Give yourself enough space so that you can go ahead and take that gray half guard and start blending that line out. The gray half guard is about a quarter of the way open, and we're going to start removing this line that we, we created with the half and the one open. And just like the steps we used um, before, go ahead and start gradually opening that blade the closer you get to the next guideline. You can see I, I use my thumb to pull out, pull at his scalp or at his skin. This helps a lot of times when there's, you know, indents in the in in his head and dark spots. It helps the clipper catch the hairs in those areas. All right, so let's go ahead and use a number two guard. This guard, this time we're closed, and we're we're pretty much blending into the number four that we use in the beginning of this haircut. Alright, so this is the white one and a half guard. It's all the way open. 
and we're going to begin to start blending out the, the line that we created between the one open and the number two guard. See, this is a huge difference between Andy's and Wall. The white one and a half guard is not needed or necessary in order to blend out this line when you use Andy. Typically, the one open blends right into the two closed when you're using your Andy. Whereas with the walls, you need the one, the white one and a half guard um, most of, for most haircuts in order to blend that line out. We're using the same process, except we're going to blend down. We're closing it the closer we get to that line that we created with the one open and the number two. Now, it didn't completely take out that line or that bulk, so go ahead and go back to the number one guard all the way open and go at it with the corners of the teeth of the clipper to start to try to remove that line or the bulk. Now the number one guard is all the way closed. And as you can see, the guideline is starting to be removed. And for a lot of haircuts, a lot of um, your customers, typically these steps are going to be already faded. They're going to be, it's going to be a, a, a nice transition, a nice fade. But then you have some clients or some customers that have an odd shaped head, man. They got indents everywhere. And you're going to have to go back and really pay attention to detail and attack some of the dark spots like I'm doing right here. I probably have, I think I have the walls all the way closed at this point. And I'm stretching the skin, and I'm like digging into that that dark spot. It just doesn't want to come out. It's being stubborn. Sometimes you have to spend that extra time with clients. Look, right here, I have the gray half guard, and you guys remember me using that way lower than this. But in order to get that dark spot out, I had to go into that dark spot and, and go a lot shorter. I think the surrounding areas was the white one and the half guard. So now we're going to start doing the other side, and we're pretty much doing the same exact steps we did prior on the other side of his head. So it's the same steps, follow along with the captions. I'm not going to really narrate so much about you know what the captions are saying, I'm just going to talk pretty much. You know, I like walls. I think walls are great clippers. But I've been I've been using Andy's. That was Andy's my first clippers were the fast feeds. And the fast feeds cut cut a lot like Andy's. I mean they use the same guards. You can you can put the, the purple magnetic guards on a on the fast feeds. So my first clippers were fast feeds. And uh I gradually, you know, I, I moved on to the masters. And the masters I've been rocking with since barber school. Love the masters. I think I think ultimately, man, it's a lot of the time what you start with, you always end up going back to. Crazy how that works. And what I mean by opening and closing, you know, as needed, it's a whole try, trial and error method I always preach. You know, if it doesn't work, if it's if it's not cutting any hair, then you got to either close the blade some, or you need to put a lower guard, right? You know, spend time doing that. Don't get so caught up on your steps that you don't pay attention to what the haircut looks like. Just because you do the same steps every haircut doesn't mean you're going to get the same results every haircut. Sometimes you're going to have to do some trial and error. And you might have to go with a higher guard in a certain area where typically you use a lower guard, you know. Now 
Now this fade, I kind of I left the the hairline over by the C cup by you know the front hairline. I left that a little bit darker so that when I line it up, it you know it pops, it stands out, it pops out a little bit. Not everybody likes that style. You know, I would especially if it's a new customer, a new client, I would definitely ask them during the consultation. I you know I wouldn't most to be honest with you, from my experience, for the most part. Most people don't like that look. They don't want to keep the edge at the C cup. They just want a regular mid fade. So that's something you have to ask your client. Because it's not about what you want. And, and barbers really have that messed up sometimes. It's not about what you want. It's about what the client wants. You got to give the client what they want. That's how you gain the attention. Me personally, I think it's a dope look. One thing I noticed too is like when people watch these videos, or my videos in particular, when I tell you to go a, you know, a half inch or an inch up with that clipper, do it. Don't try to make a little tiny space, so you know. I, I, you know, I see some people that watch the video and they're still going up a quarter of an inch up, or barely going up, just so scared to go up. You're never going to get a nicely transitioned fade if you're scared to go up. Now, don't overdo it. Don't go up super high. Like, literally do. No more, no little, no less than a half inch and no more than an inch. Save yourself that, that learning curve. Save yourself time in learning this and just try these steps out. It's going to save you time. It's going to make your blends come out a lot better. And always cut against the grain when you're fading. In the beginning. Sometimes if, you know, for some reason you want to take down some bulk, you can go with the grain. But for the most part, when you're fading, go against the grain. If the hair pattern is going sideways, then go... Turn your clipper sideways and go against the grain. Now against the grain means you go the opposite direction of the hair growth pattern. Now I'm in the back and I'm, I'm going to connect the sides together. You know, this is just my way of cutting. You can, you can cut a different way. I, sometimes I'll fade down. Sometimes I'll fade up. Sometimes I don't even use any guidelines. I, I, you know, I won't go with no half. I'll go straight from the zero and just blend all the way up to the top or blend all the way to the bottom without using any guidelines. There's all kinds of methods, all kinds of ways to come out with the same product and it's ultimately up to you to figure out what, which way works best for you. But that comes with repetition. You know, these YouTube videos that, that I'm doing for you guys, it's great and everything. But you're not going to really get this down packed unless you're actually taking action and putting in repetition. It takes a lot of reps to do this. Practice. Alright, so I always like to finish off my fades with the Andy's shaver. I mean, you can use the wall shaver. I prefer the Andy shaver, the new profile shaver. But some of the tricks into to fading is, like I'm doing right here, is I'm, I turned the clipper around. I'm using one side of the foil, and I flick at it. Now, if you create any lines, go back with your T outliners and use the corners of the blade to take that line out. But essentially, I use my shaver the same way I use my clipper. Use the corner of the, of the shaver, flick at it. I might go with the grain sometimes, do downward strokes to prevent from creating lines. And then if I do make a line, 
I go ahead and, you know, take it out with the TI liner. Let's go ahead and start lining him up. Like I always tell you guys, I start with the highest point, leave the highest point as natural as possible, and I bring everything together. His highest point was right in the middle, so we went ahead and left as natural as possible, and now we're bringing everything together. My T outliners are not zero, uh, you know, zero gap. You know, they're as close as possible to not being zero gap. Because I want to be able to use my T outliners all around. Back of the neck, on kids, everywhere. And I got a video on that coming soon, how I do my T outliners. You know, for for me, the reason why I do that, I don't zero gap it. I don't want to have more than one, you know, more than one trimmer, more than two trimmers. I don't want to have a whole bunch of trimmers for a different job. If I can do an all around job with, you know, one trimmer, I'm happy with that. Because I know that no trimmer could get any closer than a razor can. And I finish all my haircuts up with a with a razor. My client, my barber brother, that's letting me do this um, tutorial is Nate. You can follow him at FadedNate22 on Instagram. Go check him out. Can't remember who my cameraman was in this video, so I can't shout him out. I'm going to say it's either Kevin or, or my, boy, my barber brother, Mike. Right here, I, um, I wet the hair and I combed it down just so I can get any... Uh, any loose hairs that I didn't catch. I don't know about you guys, but I've had clients that come and be like, yo, you missed one little strand of hair. When my hair gets wet, it like hangs over a little bit. So this is how you avoid that. And I, I try to um, shave with the razor against the grain for the most part. Sometimes I go with the grain, then I follow it with against the grain. That's how you get that real close. So I want to be able to put out more content more often and you guys can help me by supporting this channel by commenting by subscribing and sharing. Thank you guys so much for watching.